Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And when I say ladies, I do mean both of you. <laughs> Something I love to observe, actually, is, uh, is how these, these events uh, kind of evolve over time. And uh, one thing I have been noticing is that uh, whilst not quite at 50%, the, the, the number of, uh, uh, of the fair agenda in the, in the room is growing uh, as, as time goes on. And speaking of that gender, let me introduce you to Peanut. Peanut is a guinea pig. Peanut is, in fact, my guinea pig. Now, why the hell am I showing a picture of my guinea pig in a, a presentation that is supposed to be about the algorithmic transformation of Bitcoin? Well, this particular photo represents something. It represents, I guess, a concept of freedom. When I moved over to London a couple of years ago, uh, we brought Peanut with us, and because of the vagaries of uh, the, the British civil service, uh, who had probably not encountered this situation too many times before, Peanut was classified miscellaneous, and that meant that she had the longest possible quarantine period, four months. It's not as bad as it sounds. The quarantine facility was like a, a palace, basically, a five-star hotel, and I think she was a little bit pissed off when she came home with us and found it wasn't quite the same. Uh, <clears throat> but it was also a reason why I had to buy a car so that we could drive out there for a two-hour drive every single weekend to go and visit her. This particular photo was actually taken the day that she was released from quarantine. It was the day that she was, you know, set free, I don't know if she was particularly happy about it, but uh, uh, she's actually on a, standing on a, on a, sitting on a fence post right outside the, uh, the quarantine facility. This photo also happens to be what I believe to be the first photo that was put onto the blockchain after the raising of the op return limit, the so-called unfucking. <clears throat> And that particular event meant something for Bitcoin that I think we can, uh, we, we, we can equate to freedom. It set free the power of, uh, uh, of data on chain, uh, and it set in motion a series of events that uh, enabled people to really start kind of exploring uh, what, what could be done with Bitcoin. And here we are today, just after the return to Genesis, and a whole lot more has now been unlocked, and a whole lot more freedom uh, for Bitcoin uh, is, uh, is, is in our grasp. So, a little recap. 2019 was for some of us a year of infrastructure. The Bitcoin ecosystem was reset back almost near to its starting point. It was a point where the circumstances actually had a lot in common with what Satoshi himself faced back in the very beginning of Bitcoin. We had very few miners, and Bitcoin is supposed to have many. But for a long time, Satoshi was the majority miner, and for much of that time, the only miner, keeping the Bitcoin network alive. It had to be bootstrapped. But over the last year, the miners have grown. We had very few developers who understood the Bitcoin code, the, the, the core Bitcoin code, Bitcoin D. Like Satoshi, and this time with Satoshi, we had to build their skills from the beginning so that innovative projects could flourish on top of that core piece of code. We had very little supporting infrastructure, wallets, libraries, and other critical ecosystem components. Like Satoshi, we had to support people that understood the Satoshi vision to build those things. And here we are, after being reset back almost to the beginning, to the beginning of Bitcoin 11 years ago, and we were told that restoring Satoshi's vision could never be done. Yet only one year after wondering if the Satoshi vision that we pushed for would ever be realized, it is here. The return to Genesis has happened. Bitcoin is unfucked. Bitcoin is back. And it's stronger now, a year after its rebirth, than it has ever been. 2020 is a year of realization realization of the Satoshi vision. The infrastructure is now solid, and it's perfectly clear to all involved that the protocol is not a plaything. No one is debating this. This diagram here is a bit of a timeline, and the, the loops that you see represent the ecosystem going around in circles. 
the amount of effort that has been wasted on some of these protocol level debates is extraordinary. And um, you can see in the, in the period between the, the, the creation of Bitcoin Cash and uh, uh, the time when we adopted the BSV ticker uh, over and over again, many, many different issues. Each and every one of these didn't necessarily actually result in a chain split or a hash war, but behind closed doors, I can tell you the word was mentioned every single time for all of these issues. And even now, Bitcoin Cash is engaged in yet another one of these debates, and there's a real chance that they will, uh, they will end up uh, having a hash war or a chain split. But look at what, how, what's happened for Bitcoin SV. <clears throat> Since we took the protocol off the table as a point of debate, there has been exactly zero. We've had harmony for 15 months, and in that time, we've been building, building at an extraordinary rate, free of distraction. And so we've rebuilt with the benefit of understanding the original Satoshi model. And it's a model that's working. Paymail, a missing link that makes Satoshi's original IP to IP protocol much more feasible. Storing, the da storing data on chain uh, and, uh, and recording events on chain, all of these things are, are, are now possible and are being properly explored. For the first time in Bitcoin history, people are daring to try. Daring to experiment with wildly original business models. Daring to put capital at risk for potentially extraordinary gains in exchange for making their customers' lives better. They couldn't do this before because they simply were not allowed. That world they operated in, that was not Bitcoin. Bitcoin was always meant to be an open canvas, a canvas on which people could write, write their experiments, write their successes, write their failures write things that could transform industries, governments, and even whole societies. And most importantly of all, write their own personal chronicle. And I'm going to drop a little announcement on you here today. I've said it a few times before that Genesis represents an almost complete return to the original Bitcoin protocol. There's one or two sort of small details uh, that, uh, that, that couldn't be addressed at this time. And so there will be one more hard fork. And after that, it's over. There is no more hard forking. There is no more protocol modification. It's locked. It's set in stone forever. That hard fork will be named Chronicle. The definition of Chronicle is a global, uh, is, is a, an immutable time-ordered record of events. And I think if you're looking for a definition of Bitcoin, I don't want to preempt uh, Dr. Wright uh, too much, but I think that's a, that's a pretty close fit. So Chronicle is coming. We can't tell you the precise date uh, right now uh, because one of the significant changes in it will be adjusting the difficulty adjustment cycle back to the original, and that requires a certain amount of transaction volume. Um, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll be monitoring that very closely, and when the time is right, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll begin the planning for that change. So the infrastructure is there, folks, and now it's time for us to step up and build. In 2019, we unlocked the power of data on chain. In 2020, with Genesis, we unlocked the full potential of Bitcoin, and that is functionality. The unlocking of script opens boundless possibility, boundless capability. It's an entire new industry full of unexplored potential, waiting for the pioneers, the explorers of tomorrow who will mirror the actions of the explorers of yesteryear. Throughout history, there have been professions that have been born through some innovation. An example, author, editor, these are professions that were a product of one of the greatest inventions of mankind, the printing press. The software engineer, so many of you here in the room today, and millions of them around the world. It's a job that, that so many specialize in, but it would not be possible were it not for the genius of Alan Turing and his, his contemporaries. And today, albeit 11 years late, we stand on the precipice of the birth of yet another new profession perhaps one of the most transformative in modern history, the Bitcoin script engineer. And I want to call on all of you developers here in this room and any that might be watching on the live, screen, live stream, please recognize this opportunity, this moment that should have happened 11 years ago, 
shit happened, but finally, it's at least happening now. This opportunity is here because script is unlocked, Bitcoin is back, and this new profession now has half a chance of becoming useful. In any field, there are pioneers. A pioneer is often someone of great courage, great mental stature and bravery, but usually they're also one of the first. Right now, there are exactly zero script experts in this world, and that needs to change. This is the time when the pioneers will be defined. Do you, developers, want a chance to be the next Gavin Anderson, an icon of Bitcoin? Or the next Beatles, Nirvana, Run DMC, icons of their respective music genres? Or perhaps the next Adam Smith, an icon of economics? I am here appealing to your baser instincts. I'm appealing, I'm, da I'm dangling the carrot of notoriety and fame in front of you. And I'm doing it for one simple reason. I know you. I'm the same as you. I'm subject to these baser instincts myself, even if I try to control them. Occasionally, I don't. <clears throat> but I want to motivate you. I want to motivate you in exactly the same way that Bitcoin motivates miners to act honestly to secure the global ledger. Motivate you by making it easy for you to do something to benefit the world because it does something valuable for you. That's what Bitcoin is about. It's about harnessing the base instincts of people and turning them towards an outcome that is useful for everybody. You might have other reasons for doing it, better reasons, nobler reasons. I hope you do, but it's a good start. But I do make no apology for using the mechanisms of Bitcoin to incentivize you to become useful to Bitcoin because by doing so, I'm encouraging you to become useful to yourself and everyone around you. It's time to build. You'll hear this phrase a lot over the next couple of days, I'm sure. Commercialization. It's time for a pivot of the whole ecosystem. What you see of Enchain publicly is very much infrastructure related up until now. But I'm sure you know there are things that we are working on that we haven't talked about in public. As 2020 unfolds, more of that will come to light and the Enchain commercial juggernaut will roll out. <clears throat> but it's not just Enchain. Across the ecosystem, I see developers and businesses pivoting from an infrastructure focus to business development activities. Now let's get back to the title of this presentation, the algorithmic transformation. What on earth does that mean? It means that all of the activity that I've just talked about is what drives Bitcoin to naturally form into the network, that, uh, the network configuration that Satoshi described. The advent of Genesis and its scaling related changes also paves the way for the Bitcoin network to start reforming itself into the structure that it was intended to be. It happens because of economic incentives pushing people towards the kinds of interaction with the Bitcoin network that are most efficient for them. But it also happens to be the most efficient configuration and, and, uh, and, and, and type of activity for the network itself. That's part of the genius of the design. <clears throat> so this is what happens in an unscaled world. You end up with a mesh network because no one wants too many connections because too many connections costs money. I've separated them on this image to show the nodes that are mining and the nodes that are not. When scale happens, nodes become more expensive to run. Nodes are supposed to be expensive to run because nodes that aren't being paid by the revenue stream of mining are actually doing nothing useful. They are consuming resources of others for no purpose. They are, in fact, parasitic. And Bitcoin disincentivizes them away from operating nodes and toward being SPV clients on the edge of the network simply because it's more efficient to do so. If running a node does not make you money, stop running a node. <clears throat> and now this happens. The transformation of the configuration of the Bitcoin network is algorithmic, but it's not the type that we normally think of when we, when we talk about algorithms. This is an economic and a behavioral algorithm. And what does it mean to us? It means SPV becomes a better option. 
It's almost like a self, uh, self-reinforcing cycle. The densely connected uh, uh, centre of the network um, uh, makes, makes SPV work better simply because everything propagates so much faster. And because of that fast propagation, of course, zero conf becomes real zero conf. It becomes safe, it becomes secure. You can get an answer to your question, is my transaction going to get settled within a fraction of a second? And of course, all of this happens by harnessing natural behavior. So all of these transformations are market-driven, not by design. When I say design, I mean by central planning and someone actually actively choosing to cause uh, all of these changes. It's very much baked into the design of Bitcoin to uh, incentivize these things to happen. Bitcoin transforms itself as a natural consequence of its brilliant incentive system. And that's why it grows and transforms algorithmically. Bitcoin spent a year rebuilding and getting ready for this. It's ready now. It took all of you here to get us there. And some of you are public and some of you are not. It took Genesis, which was a colossal engineering effort to make happen in a time frame that people said was impossible. And there is one group of people who have made an extraordinary contribution to this effort. In fact, many of them are here in this room today. You probably don't know them. They will probably hate me for what I'm about to do. But it's time you did know them. I see a few of you in the audience, uh, some from London, some from, uh, some from Slovenia. If you are a member of the Bitcoin SV team, would you please stand up? I'd just like to warn you all, I know where you're all sitting. <laughs> Coming up to the stage, please. I do know where you're all sitting, so if anyone thinks they're gonna, gonna sneak out of this, uh, someone's gonna tap you on the shoulder for a second, so save us all the trouble and just come on up. <laughs> Carl, Priyanka, where are you? I'll introduce you just to, to, to one or two of them. I, I don't have time to, to kind of go through them all. Oh, this is Richard, he's the, probably the one that least wants to be up here. <laughs> Ram is our head of QA. Um, QA is one of those kind of understated uh, positions that, um, that, that, uh, that sometimes people forget about. But QA actually gives us the one thing that was most important to us going, particularly going into the hash war, but is still important to us today, and that is confidence. Confidence that our software is solid. Confidence that our software will not fall over at the time that we need it the most. So. Uh, we thank you for all, all of your work, uh, Ram, and your entire team. Sean here, probably also the least, uh, least likely to want to be up here, uh, is the, the, the product owner uh, of, uh, of the Bitcoin SV project, and he's the glue that holds, uh, holds the, the whole project together. Matej heads up the Slovenian part of the, uh, of the team, uh, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, he's the best damn coder I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and of course, many others. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to get in trouble for doing this, but Calvin Air, are you in the room? There you are. Would you mind standing up, please? Without Calvin Air, who made the Bitcoin SV team possible, and without these people, we would not have Bitcoin today. It would have died 15 months ago. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the people that gave Bitcoin back. My monitor is now telling me to shut up because I've gone over time. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>